Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today let's talk about overheads. All right, so let me start off by apologizing. I didn't do a video yesterday. I mean, I tried to, but then I had like loads of technical difficulties and in the end it just got really frustrating, so so I skipped. So anyway, I know you guys didn't notice, but you know, I thought I'd just, you know, I feel guilty anyway. So, but I'm going to talk about today what I was going to talk about yesterday or what I actually did talk about yesterday, but you know, with all the, the problems, right? So the last video I did was called Zero Budget Marketing, where I talked about how you, you, when it comes to marketing or through a lot of things, you know, you're either spending time or money and you shouldn't need to spend a lot of money on marketing, right? But, but you can, and it will save you a lot of time. And of course you got the big guys who can, and you know, raise lots of investment capital and spend lots of money on advertising and getting the word out there. But you know, you and I, we don't have that. Right. And uh, I want to talk a little bit more about that because I mentioned in that video that I really don't like to spend money and I really don't. Right. I'm, I, you know, I consider myself to be really cheap. I mean, I know I've got the nice car, which I agonized over for years and years before I actually got it. You know, I've got an office, you know, um, you know, we got, we got a team, but you know, I, I still haven't hired somebody locally because I'm thinking about the overheads, you know, I still haven't, um, you know, I was looking at some really nice offices yesterday, you know, uh, nearby, which were, uh, you know, they're air conditioned, you know, nice, you know, nice offices, the kind that I think, you know, I wouldn't mind clients coming to visit me in these offices, you know, but it, but the problem was it was just a little, well, it's like twice as much as this office here. So, and one of the things I'm always thinking about is overhead. And I'm, I know you guys are too, right? Cause this is, cause we live in a world of free, you know, luckily we have, you know, in many cases, we have free development tools. We have free, uh, you know, uh, free books from the library. We got free information on the internet. We got free courses. We got you know, a lot of free things. But at the same time, we don't have you know we a lot of the things that we sell. We sell for free. It's really hard to put a paid app on the app market without having a free equivalent. And if you have the free equivalent, you're thinking about how you're gonna monetize that, either through in-app purchases or through ads and stuff like that. And like I say, most of my revenue from apps comes from, from ads, but it's a very, I mean, it's, we have to have a lot of impressions to generate the revenue. So, so I'm always thinking about the overhead. Whenever you know, we're investing in something new, you know, I'm thinking we, whether or not we're gonna make the money back on that or whether or not our cash flow can handle it. I mean, the same, same as everyone else does, right? So. And it's, it's much different than the big guys who could, you know, invest loads of money and get big offices and not make any profits. The reason I say that is, um, I was reading an article this weekend about, or this past weekend about SoundCloud. Uh, you know, they, it was in the news, they, they're, you're gonna, they've announced 40% redundancies, so they're gonna get rid of, you know, 40% of their staff right because they just they're not able to turn a profit right and I, I'm, I'm part of the reason for this I love using SoundCloud you know I, I like to take it to the gym and listen to lots of different things when I'm you know when I'm working out but I've also got you know I've also got Google Music you know if I don't have Google Music I'll you know I switch to Spotify sometimes and the SoundCloud they're trying to position themselves with the same price and the same structure so you know and I just haven't really seen the the need so I haven't you know, I don't mind paying the money, but I don't see the value, so I haven't paid, right? So, and I think, I don't know if that's the same with everybody, but, you know, I was reading about SoundCloud, I mean, they got really nice offices, and the, the article was all about their really nice offices, and, you know, over the years, they've raised $298 million in, in funding, you know, so they're able to keep going, but they're just not profitable. So it's like, it's a completely different mindset and a completely different world. And sometimes I think, you know, maybe I'm just, you know, I read these books and they talk about, you know, the prosperity mindset or the lack, you know, the abundance mindset or the, or the lack mindset. And maybe sometimes I have too much of the lack mindset, but you know, I, I tread very carefully. I don't want to be the, the, you know, the person who spends their entire savings to, to build something that, that never works or they just can't find a way to make it work. You know, and another company, uh, that was, you know, so I just started reading about this. Another one was Twitter, you know, Twitter, you know, Twitter is huge. They've changed the world. I mean, you know, can't imagine the world without Twitter, but it's still not a profitable company. You know, it's still, you know, they've raised, I think, over a billion in funding, you know, over the years. And it's, it still doesn't turn a profit. It's just, it's one of these strange, it's this, it's this economy that I just don't quite get. This, this bubble economy, you think, well, if they're not making any money, how do they continue to, you know, to do what they do? But, but it is. But, you know, for you and I, it's different. Right? A lot of times when salespeople call me like to sell their you know, ASO services or their, 
their uh, their ads or or you know their different or developers you know I, I get you know at least well you know three or four development companies contact me a day sometimes they do on the phone which is annoying and they'll say things like you know oh Eric we can save you um, we can save you 50% on your development costs and I said well you don't know what my development costs are and then they'll say oh yeah I know but we have developers they'll cost uh, you know they'll cost 25 US dollars an hour right which is really low for UK and I and I say well, first of all, you know, not all developers are, are equal. It's not a commodity skill. Some developers work faster, some are more efficient, some are more talented, some work slower, you know, so, it, so you can't really, you know, go based on that. And even if that were a constant, which it isn't, you know, that's still pretty high for me. You know, it's like, you know, you're comparing against, I said, well, why do you say you save me 50%? And they'll say like, oh, the UK average developer price is whatever. Like, okay, that's fine. I'm not paying that anyway. So. So there's a lot of lot, lot of assumptions there, and a lot of times, you know, they'll try to make you sound, try to make you feel cheap, like you're just not spending enough, right? And um, but that's, you know, that's one of the things that we have to do as as business people. We we'll always have to look at the money going out and the money coming in, and hopefully, the money coming in is is more than the money going out. When I said the other day that. I, I don't like investing in advertising because I never know the returns on advertising and I still think that's, that's the case, right? If I hire a developer, I know, well, when I hire a developer at first, you know, I don't, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big if. Like, I don't know if they're going to perform the way that I want them to. I don't know if they're going to be good, bad, or, you know, you know, they might interview well, but they might not, they might be lazy when they start. They might be in over their head. There might be a lot of issues and occasionally we'll find somebody who's really good it's just one of those things to invest in. But even in those situations, I'm always thinking about the cost. Like, you know, you know we were hiring a, a content, a, a, like a content person uh, a few weeks ago and we had somebody start for a couple weeks and I just thought, well, it's just not working out. He's not really producing at the level I would, I would think. So, uh, so we left and I thought, should we get somebody else? And I thought, let's, let's hold off on that because we're still not sure on the return on that investment. And it's something that I really like. This is something I really like about indie developers and independent developers is because I, I mentioned this before where we're, we're alchemists. Like we, we, take, we take something, we try to build something from nothing, right? So it might be a small investment where you, you're working more than you should or working a job you don't want to do or a part-time job. Or, you know, for me, it was working a contract that I didn't want to be working and I didn't need to be working, but I wanted to invest in, in, some, uh, you know, in a new application or something like that. So I'll take on extra work in order to make things happen where I don't know whether or not they're going to work, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's putting your, your faith and hopes into something and hoping it'll grow into something. And it'd be really nice. You know what? It'd be really nice if I could just go out and get like investors and get, you know, you know, a few million in investment and then not deliver on any profitability. But that's not the way this works. And that's not the way I just, it's just a different mindset. I don't understand. Anyway, so I guess the point I'm trying to make is that for those of you out there who are just are struggling to make ends meet, you're, you're trying to produce something at the same time you don't know whether or not it's going to work out. You know, everyone around you is taking a safer route because they have, the, they have their job or if they have their job, they're, you know, they're saving their money or they're having a good time with it and you're, you're working away and putting into things where you're re not really sure if it's going to work out. For those of you who feel like you're pushing that boulder up the hill, like the way I do sometimes, right? I just want to say to you that you're not alone and a lot of us are in that situation and it, it's I think it's very commendable that you're doing something where you're trying to build something and make something work from scratch. You're pushing the boulder up the hill. You're not going to be like all those people who got made redundant. You're taking charge of your own destiny and you know it, it's not it's not easy, it's not hard and it's not safe, right? We don't know if it's going to work out or not, but you know I'm proud of the fact that I'm doing it and I think uh, hopefully you're proud of the fact that you're doing it too. So anyway, I guess that's all I have to say today. I'll talk to you guys on Monday.